Hello, everyone. Well, not everyone. Hello to you. I'm just talking to you. Not anyone else, just you. How are you today? That's good. Really? Did that happen? I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Well, as much as I want to hear about you, I'm going to talk about this. This is a uh, Victorian dip pen nib made by some company or other. I'll tell you in a second once I get my eyeball out. Fairchild. Leroy W. Fairchild. And um, it's quite lovely in its little present, present situation. Gold nib, mother of pearl holder, and let's just see how it writes. Very fine. The fine is very fine. Let's see if I can draw off some fine lines here. Get in focus. Damn you. There we go. The fine is very, very fine. But a problem that dip pens have is you have to keep dipping them. You kept that, you know, they have enough for just a little tiny bit of writing, though this one seems to be doing pretty well, but I'm not pressing down very hard. So what I do with these is I make a Franken pen. So you will watch as I do it. Now you do not try this at home because you'll just break it. Now this, I bought this pen specifically to be used as a Franken pen holder, and I have in its little spot right now a broken, this is a broken Waterman nib, but let's see if this one fits in it, because this might work better. Let's see what happens here. It's pretty tight. I don't want to cram it in too far because if I do cram it in too far it'll end up cracking the nib and I don't want that to happen. I want to have it in far enough that it holds it tight and I want the, it, it in far enough so that the feed or the feed in the nib will uh, the feed will feed the nib and the nib will be held tight. So now I can use this nib in this pen and be able to write an entire, oh, I might not be able to write an entire novel or even a sonnet, but I can do an envelope in one dip. Mr. and Mrs. John Smith, blah, 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 zip code. I can, that can all be done in one dip. Whereas if I kept it in its beautiful mother of pearl holder, I'd have to dip it any number of times. Now, when you make a Franken pen, one of the things you have to be concerned about as well is whether the top, the tip of the point is going to hit the top of the cap. And this one, um, I cannot remember how I measured it. If I measured it before, but I'll measure it now. It goes all the way to the very top of the crown there, right? There's no, it, sometimes an inner cap, a cap ends right there. But this one goes all the way to the top. Okay, double, triple check that. See, this is one of the few times I actually double and triple check something.
Now, this, so if that, if the top of the pen is safe until about there, I should be able to screw this down. Look, and it still has that much space to go. It stops screwing here, the threads stop, and I'm still not hitting the top. So I can safely place this nib in this pen and use it, even though this is sticking way, way out. Now the reason I don't shove it further back, and I've described this in other videos, but I'll tell you, just don't tell that person over there. I'm just going to tell you. I'm giving you the secret. If you looked at the cross section of these holders, you can't quite see it here. It's, it's not, yeah, you can a little bit. I'll just draw it out though. The cross section of a dip pen nib, cross section of a dip pen nib is not round. It's slightly flat on the top. Flatter. It's not completely flat, but it's it's elliptical. And if I cram a elliptical nib in a round hole, I'll crack it or I'll deform it. So what I do, I'm just telling you now, not telling anyone else, and don't you tell anyone else. Fountain pen holes and fountain pen nibs are round. So what I do is I don't use the feed that came in this pen. I use a different feed. I use a feed that's slightly smaller So there's this, this gap here that would not normally exist, but that gap allows the flatter top of the nib to fit in there. And it all fits snugly enough for me to do what I want to do with it, which is to sit at my desk and write address, addresses on envelopes. There's an envelope that I started and I misspelled it, so I'll continue to misspell it here. Daniel Dreyer Smith the fourth, twenty nine seventy two Western Avenue. Number 27B, and they live, we'll pretend, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minnesota 55420. So I still have room. To write something else. There's a lot of ink in this little feed. It's not coming from the pen itself. Um, I, I usually, I mean this one might have actually ink in it because I had this other pen in it, but uh, normally I don't uh, do anything but dip the pen because I really want to make sure there's a lot of ink. Sometimes these uh, dip pen nibs Flex so much that it's hard for the nibs to the ink to flow to keep going. Now the other thing about these nibs, you'll notice that they do not have a breather hole in them, and the breather hole actually helps the ink flow uh, on a fountain pen. The um, and in this case, I don't have that, but. Again, because I'm dipping, it's fine. But, you know, the pen seems to be fine. I'll just keep, well, since you're here, I'll just, now I'll do a, a drawing. This is a, oh, that's awful paper. 
I normally don't use nibs like this for drawing, but I will on this one just to see. So I'm pretty happy with this nib. It's not horribly flexible, but it has a really nice fine. What am I drawing here? I'm drawing a dissected frog. That's what I'm drawing. I had to dissect one of these things at one point in grade school. I remember the everyone had, maybe we had teams of people. There's an eyeball, eyeball, throat. And we, you, you know, you had your little pins, you'd pin the poor guy down onto the wax, the brown wax backing. These were sort of on these flat trays. And then you'd get out your little scissors and you'd cut them down the middle and you'd peel back his stomach. So you have all those pins. And I haven't dipped it yet, have I? I can't even remember. But I'm going to keep drawing until it stops. Um, okay, so what do you have here? You've got a heart here, let's say, with stuff. And you've got the lungs. They have lungs, right? Amphibians have lungs. They had gills at one point, and then, and then they had the intestines. You open that up and peel that back, and inside is a what is remaining of a fly. And then, you know, further on down, you see it turning into shit. There's a little... Make, make the, draw the legs there. Here's the little patootie of the frog. Okay, patootie. Now they have bones, right? They've got bones. So there's the rib cage. So here's the, oh, we didn't draw the stomach. Here's the stomach. And the intestines. So anyway, here's the skin. Here's the throat that goes croak, croak, croak. There's an eyeball. He's dead though, so we got little X's over the eyes. My mother wanted me to be, when I grew up, she thought I would make a very nice scientific illustrator. And uh, it was nice of her to think that I would do that. Um, I used to love drawing in science class. I don't think I really quite understood how cells worked and DNA and all of that kind of stuff, but I could certainly draw you know, the parts of a leaf. Okay, now it's stopped. I was just about to dip, but no, it's still going. This pen is a, a bulb filler. I'll show you what that means in a second. You have little claw toenails, right? Yeah, like Godzilla. Godzilla. Just like Godzilla. You know, the original Godzilla movie starred, among other stars, Raymond Burr, who later became Perry Mason. And it just seemed like such a funny thing. Like, why did Raymond Burr have to be in this movie? Why did they have to have any white guy in it at all? And I thought maybe that was one of the conditions of the World War II peace treaty where the hero of the of any science fiction movie that you make has to be a white guy. So anyway, 
Maybe, maybe it does, I don't know. A bulb filler is this. It's, it's a little piece of rubber and you pump it a number of times and the feed that originally came in this pen had a a tube on it. It's like a feed that you would see in a vacuumatic. Here's the nib and the feed. Here's the pen. Here's the bulb in the back. The section and this and this little metal thing here, This is these are all glued together. That is glued to this and this is glued to that. And inside of this is a feed with a tube in it. And imagine filling it with ink. You, you put it in the ink bottle, you press this down, you let it expand, and ink shoots up through this little tube and fills up to maybe that amount. That's not very much ink. So you squeeze it again, air goes out, not the liquid, but the air goes out, bubble, 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 and then ink comes back in, and that much more ink comes back in. And then you do it again, and air goes out, ink comes in, air goes out, ink comes in, air goes out, ink comes in, and then when you stop seeing the bubbles come up, then you're at the top. You're full. Now if you take that tube out, which I did, because I needed a different feed, I can squeeze it and only the first amount of ink will come in. So what I have to do is something that's very cumbersome, but I do this, I'll show you. It's a pain in the butt, but I'll show you anyway, even though it's a pain in the butt. You squeeze this, that squeezes the ink, you put it in, you let it expand, right? You have that much ink in it. You turn this over like this, and if you squeeze it again, air is coming out, not ink. Should be air, but it looks like ink is coming out. So what the, maybe it's full. Okay, air is coming out. I just saw bubbles there. So now you let it go again, and you repeat that, you know, three or four times. And then you'll have, you know, more ink in here. So it's what you have to do when you are making Franken pens. You have to, something has to give. Now, yes, I could have drilled a little hole in this feed and added a tube and done all sorts of stuff, but that requires talent and tools and time and that's what I don't have. Okay, back to our little frog. So, what else do frogs have? Frogs have their little feet, their little claws, their little guts, their heart. Usually by this time, by the time we got this far, Usually, three or four third graders would be puking their guts out, and the teacher would realize that it's time to go back to the exciting world of spelling or some other thing. Only the real perverted boys, of which I was, I do not count myself as one. Uh, would sit there and they would, with their knives, they would just chop the poor thing into smithereens. And maybe they'd, you know, take a little bit of it and throw it at the, the girl in the front row and pandemonium would ensue. But, you know, boys like that, the, the perverse you know, bullies of the world. You know, they they couldn't do anything else in third grade. They had to wait till they got to be an adult to join the Republican Party and 
do that kind of, you know, be a bully at that, or whatever they, wherever you, wherever bullies are now, gain the White House. I bet our present president, the present occupant of the White House, was someone who threw frog guts. No one threw frog guts better than I did. No one knows how to throw frog guts better than I. It's true. True, folks. No one knows more about frog guts than Donald J. Trump. Yep, I believe that, Mr. President. So anyway, there you go. I showed you. Don't tell anyone else about this. I showed you how to make a Franken pen. Uh, though, I just have to say, when you are buying an old pen like this that's well over 100 years old and more like almost 150 years old, the chances that you're going to get one that does not, isn't damaged, you know, at the very end of this little point is a little tiny dollop of silver metal, and that is iridium, I-R-I-D-I-U-M. And those come from comets or asteroids that killed off the dinosaurs. That's, you see a lot of iridium, iridia iridium deposits in the world because of that source. I don't think iridium is native to the earth. And um, so it's a relatively rare metal and it's used on really good fountain pen nibs. But in a hundred years, this could have dropped on the floor and the iridium could have broken off. So you need to make sure it has iridium. And if you're buying this on things like this on eBay, oftentimes you can't tell. And I did not know when I bought this that it had iridium. I was crossing my little fingers, crossing my fingers that it was gonna work, but I was, I, there was no guarantee. So I'm very happy that this one does work. And I'm very happy with how it writes. It's really quite, it's not, it's not a great, it's not great, flexible, froggy. R O G G Y, froggy. It's okay. It's pretty sweet. But it's something I would use sparingly. And see what happens when you, when I, when I write with any pen. I just have to not bump into invisible here. Got so much crap on my desk. When I write small, it's really hard for me to to make a thin line. The thin line has, comes with speed for me. And if I'm writing really small, that's not nearly thin enough. So Mr. and Mrs. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. There you go. Frankenpen. Yay! This nib, which was really nice and is missing its iridium, uh, will go on some other pen that I will use for drawing. This will go in here in its little box. And when it comes time for me to sell the pen, I will, if I sell this pen, I'll probably sell this with it. And I'll say, you know, this originally came with this holder. So if you want to put it back in its rightful location, you have the ability to do that. But you can just dip it. It's also very hard to hold onto a pen that's very thin. You know, you're, there's not enough space for your little fingers to grab and hold it as much as I like it to be held. Okay, Anatomy Lesson 101.
Thank you for watching.